Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Chaos Child. We had a major emotional moment when we got Curse's letter, and now we're moving on from that. Same time. Frisia Incorporated. So, eh, I got it. Miyashiro-chan, Hanni no kono iye ni ita sou yo. Momose removed the phone away from her ear and relayed Shinjo's message to Kunosato. Kunosato stopped typing at her computer and grabbed the phone away from her. Shinjo-san, Miyashiro ni kawatte kure. Kakunin shitai koto ga aru. She must have not liked the answer she got back because she looked annoyed. Dattara, narubeku hayaku kochira ni tsurete kite kure. Oumaka ni naga, data no arai dashi to kensaku ga uwatta. Kekka wa, ima sotchi ni meeru de okutta. Jeez. Momose arched her eyebrows, Kunosato hung up. That's not what I meant, Momose began. Kunosato looked down as if searching her own feelings. But then she looked up like nothing had happened and turned back to her computer. <笑>私は利己主義ですから。失恋した男女同士がくっつくような絆の舐め合いは、ヘドが出ます。同情するのも、されるのも公明です。舐め合いかどうかはともかく、私は同情って優しさだと思ってるわよ。気持ちはわか
Nothing made her more upset than when she was talking about something serious and the person she was speaking with responded with a lie. That's why she told jokes. Everyone around her joked back. It was a lot easier that way. But out of all the people she knew, Ito and Serika from the newspaper club were some of the ones who lied the least. Okay, I called that into question before, but apparently she was telling the truth about Ito. They just weren't any good at it. But to Arimara, that was a greater blessing than the others could imagine. That was why it had been such a shock. It might not have been as bad for her as it was for Miyashiro, but she felt like she'd been betrayed by someone who was more than a friend. When Kunosato realized that she wasn't going to get anything useful out of Arimura, she turned back to her computer. Wow, it took a while for the text to finish that one up. She sighed and flicked the monitor with her fingers. ここは調査会社だ。さらに新庄さんが持っているネットワークも使える。人探しや新編調査はお箱なんだよ。だが、どれだけ遡っても中学以前の記録が出てこない。あいつが第三者的な情報として最初に登場するのは2009年の11月だ
全てを話してほしい。Oh, see, this ought to be good. We always remember the quake when we're carrying her on our back, but that's all we got. I wasn't sure how to process the complicated feelings I felt when he asked me that question. It was painful and unreal to think that my oldest friend was a killer. It made me furious that I'd lost my best friend and both my sisters at the same time. It made me sad to think of the letter that Nono had written to me and to realize that I might never feel better again. You know, I do have to wonder this whole game, we were wondering. The killer's targeting us, but not for our life. But now I'm wondering if, in fact, we just happen to be the protagonist, but the killer was going after Kurosu the whole time. That was the climax of the New Generation murders. And she killed off. Well, I don't know if she killed off Senri. Senri might have already been dead, but used, quote, Senri, and then killed Yui. Like, this, this might have been. A Kurosu plot all along that we just happen to be very close to. And it made me feel pathetic to realize how I didn't want to admit that Serika Onoe was the cause of it all. It all mixed together, and like a swamp that threatened to draw me down, it pulled me deeper inside the abyss of my memories. It was before I'd started elementary school. I couldn't remember the exact date. She was my next door neighbor and would come over and play a lot. Huh. Yes, that's right. I was born in 1997, so if it was the same year I started to elementary school, alright, it would be around 2004. We played together almost every day. She was like a little sister to me. I remember that at first I'd read her picture books that I'd only just learned to read myself. And her family was a lot like mine. This is all very new information. Right, um, I'll tell you about mine though. I was an only child, and both of my parents worked. They both worked at an IT company back when there weren't very many of those. I think they met each other there. Work was all they cared about. It was only years later that I learned that normal people didn't eat all three meals with a babysitter. About the time I started elementary school, I started going online using one of their old computers. It was common for me to be up past midnight even then, but my parents didn't know. I think they didn't care. I can remember at least two birthdays where they just left me a present and a note saying they were sorry they couldn't make it. The year after the last one, there wasn't a present. And the year after that, there wasn't even a note. Part of the way through elementary school, I mostly stopped going. I think it was third grade. My mom happened to be home, so she picked up the phone when the teacher called. She looked annoyed when she talked to them. She said her husband was the one who took care of all that and hung up. She didn't tell me to go to school, or even that I didn't have to go. And dad didn't even know the teacher's name. At the time, I learned online that this was what they called low level child neglect. Yeah, Miyashiro did mention his parents were neglectful a long time ago, but it looks like this is actually true, even in the legal sense of the word. Serika was the same. Actually, she was worse. She always used to tell me I was lucky because I got a card. Oh, a credit card. I didn't have a babysitter then, so I had to get my own food. Once I learned how to use the card, I would split the food I bought with Serika. I don't think her parents hit her or anything either. Oh, there was one time she came over to my house, really scared. Her parents had tried to force her to go to a hospital, she said. Oh? No, I don't know the details, but they said all kinds of mean things about how she was crazy and how she wasn't normal. Oh, oh boy. So I think it was a psycho. I think it was psychologist, or AA psychiatrist. We, ma we made up for the lack of one A with two A's on the other side. So I think it was a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, or someone who worked at a hospital like that. She cried a long, long time. I let her stay in my room for a while. My parents never cleaned it, and they never looked inside it. Yeah, thinking back, we were probably together all the time when I was little. No, I have never met Serika's parents. She said they were almost never home. I don't think I ever went to her home either. They didn't have a computer, so there was no need to go. Huh? I'm not sure. I don't think she went to school a lot. I never saw her playing with anyone but me, and we were busy finding information on the internet, so we were much smarter than. No, never mind. Yeah, we were so much smarter than everyone else. When we were in fourth grade, two years before the earthquake, we heard a rumor about Amy, an urban legend. Okay, this is where it comes to a head, right? We both went to the basement of the hospital to look for it. Yes, AH Tokyo General Hospital. Now here's the killer, cause 
Kurosu swears that didn't happen. She says only Miyashiro went. So what is this? We liked stuff like that. Both me and her. That's where we saw the experiment being done on Minamisawa. We got scared and ran. I couldn't even imagine what it was that I was seeing back then. That was the first time she and I snuck in anywhere. Serika? I think she was scared. I remember thinking that I needed to protect her. But we were both about equally excited. It was a chance to know something no one else knew. Serika told me I should go to school and tell everyone what I saw, and so I did. Uh... Everyone told me I was lying, of course. So then I started going even less. I started researching the sumo stickers and stuff. We tried making a webpage about it together. When we were in 6th grade, the new generation madness happened. That was 2009. It was like we'd gone crazy. At first we couldn't believe that something like that was happening in the city we lived in. We spent almost the whole day glued to the computer following the news. Yeah, these things, which we never got to look up. I wonder if it was from Chaos Head. When something big like that's going on, if you take your eyes off the internet for even a few hours, you'll get left behind. We stayed up all night in shifts following the case. Sometimes we'd use our cell phones to read the internet as we actually went out to the crime scenes and took pictures. More murders kept happening, and eventually they started to say Takumi Nishijo was the killer, but that turned out to be wrong. Serika and I were both very excited. He seemed so cool. Proving your innocence means getting the right information, and shoving it in the faces of the people whose information was bad, right? It seemed like the ultimate expression of what I was trying to do then, and I guess I'm still trying to do now with the newspaper club. I'm so much smarter than everyone else. Serika said he was amazing. I agreed. When the earthquake happened, Serika and I were near the O Front building. Nishijo was doing something there and we wanted to see. And then there was this high-pitched noise, and everything went white. I guess those are the beams of light in the opening movie. And then it happened. At first we didn't think it was an earthquake, we thought it was a bomb or something. The ground bounced up and down like a trampoline and several of the telephone poles near us fell over. I could hear screaming and the sound of breaking glass. Someone yelled, EARTHQUAKE! That's how I knew it was an earthquake. Anyway, Serika and I ran away so we wouldn't get caught up in the people panicking. But of course, then things went to hell, right? We had the carrier. But then why were people giving us crap for not taking care of that one woman? Wouldn't they have seen we were carrying Serika? This is where I get bothered. We didn't know where we were running, but we didn't want to be there. We got caught up in the crowds, and Serika and I were quickly separated. When that happened, I got scared. And all of a sudden, I couldn't move. I got pushed over and fell, and then I crawled behind something. The shaking had stopped, but what had scared me more than the quake was the way everyone around me had changed in an instant. I spent a long time in that spot, unable to move. The idea of going home never occurred to me. There was no way I could rely on my parents for help, and at the time I thought that no place in Shibuya was still standing. I didn't know what to do. So this explains why he was so mad at the parents who were like, Oh, we're saving you, and he's like, Really? You've been leaving me alone for years, and now you're saving me? And then I found Serika passed out near me. She must have been pushed down and hit her head, or maybe she hadn't been able to handle what she was seeing, because she had passed out. I know. Because it said she passed out near me. I decided that I had to save her. The information online said that Yoyogi was relatively undamaged and the hospitals were accepting patients. I carried her on my back and started walking there. And then... No, never mind. Yeah, we're skipping the part where we got judged. Anyway, I just kept walking, and finally I reached A.H. Tokyo General Hospital, which had been turned into a temporary shelter. Serika looked like she was in pain the whole way there. She didn't wake up. I saw my parents there, and then I collapsed from a terrible headache. So maybe this is when we got our psychic powers? That's all I remember from the earthquake. When I woke up, I was in Aoba dorm, and a year had passed while I was in a coma. And that's where I met Nono and the others. Sorry. I'm fine. I heard what happened then from Nono and Serika. Serika woke up at the hospital and saw me unconscious. She stayed with me the whole time, and when AH Tokyo General overflowed, I was moved to one of the other hospitals in their network and she came with me. 
She wasn't in good shape either, and I guess she didn't want to go home. She refused to leave my side, and when the people from the hospital saw her, they put her into care. Counseling, I mean. Her parents died in the earthquake, she said. So did mine. What? Did that happen later, or am I lying about that? Given the circumstances, the hospital didn't seem to mind her staying there with me, but once things started to calm down, they sent her home. She found some relatives who agreed to help her get a place, the one she has now, and then every day she came to visit me in the hospital. No, I don't know. I think she said they were relatives a little long way away. Yeah, this is where things get weird, I think. If she can manipulate people, then maybe that's how she got the place where she lives. No, I don't know their names. I'm sorry. Some time passed, and since there was nobody to take me in, I was moved to Alba Dorm. But she still stayed with me the whole time. That's when she met Nono, I guess. They were good friends. When I woke up after more than a year, I had trouble moving. Nono helped me with my physical therapy. Sarika would come check in on me all the time, and Nono would happily tell her my progress. Family was very, very important to Nono, and Sarika was the one person outside the family she called by her first name, not her last. The two of them would go out and visit all the different crepe shops in Shibuya, and since Sarika didn't have any interest in makeup or clothes, Nono would take her shopping for them. They really were good friends. But... After my therapy ended and I could walk, I started going to school more and more. Yes, that middle school. I was given special permission to be in second year along with the other kids my age. Sarika did the same as a first year student. After the earthquake, while I was in a coma, she'd started going to school. It was hard living on her own, but Nono would take care of her, and her relatives sent her plenty of money. Hmm. She seemed to be doing better than she was at her old house. No, there was nothing strange, I think. I went to Hekiho Academy because they offered free tuition for orphans of the earthquake. A year later, so did Sarika. We both joined the newspaper club and did things there. It was exactly as you saw it, I think. She spent a lot of time with us at school, but she had her own friends in her own class. She wasn't part of any of their groups, but it didn't seem like they were ignoring her or anything. Yeah, remember way early in the game? She seemed to be pretty popular. I'd never seen her with anybody suspicious, and she wasn't the type of person to keep secrets. When I didn't have a charger, she'd just hand me her phone and let me use it. That was the kind of girl she was. Yes. Sarika was a normal high school kid, just like us. But again, Kurosu's like, oh, you don't want to know about our secret? Like, something happened between her and Kurosu that we have no idea what it is. Anyway, it's still the same day. The same time. The streets of Shibuya. This is not what I expected. Serika was running. She was out of breath and had a terrible headache. There was sweat all over her body and it wasn't from exhaustion. Running a few minutes wasn't enough to tire her out. Compared to what she'd had to do, her mind and body to commit the murders... What? Compared to what she'd had to do to her mind and body or with? This was nothing at all. Well, I never expected this. She touched a small cut in her stomach as she ran. She felt slick blood, a sensation she was long since tired of. She would probably have to stitch it up, but if her organs weren't ruptured, she'd be fine. So did Kurusu actually land a blow? I don't think Miyashiro touched her at all. She was used to getting stitches without anesthetic. She didn't even need a towel to bite down onto her to relieve the pain. The needle didn't even need to be a medical one, but this terrible headache was new to her. Serika stopped when she saw there was no one around. What? She punched the- okay, the wound. She punched the wound on her stomach hard, two or three times. The sensation of a fierce external pain, a sensation she was used to, ran up her spine. <laughs> what? She'd hoped that it would alleviate the pain of her headache. She'd hoped her brain would decide the pain of her open wound was more important than the headache. But... The headache didn't stop. It felt like a cold needle was being driven into her head with every heartbeat, so her mind screamed at her that something was terribly wrong. She knew why. 
能力の干渉に抗っただけでこれか。Really? Her head hurt, but her mind was still capable of clarity. Her foe was far stronger than she expected. Mind control. An unimaginably horrible form of hypnosis which could make anyone do whatever you wanted. When he was an ally, she'd thought it was the greatest power imaginable. Now that he was an enemy, it seemed like the worst. Interesting. Yeah. That's not right, she laughed to herself. He hadn't been an ally. He hadn't been a helper or a co conspirator either. If you could call him anything, he was a blackmailer. What? So there is a mastermind, and it's not Serica. That's insane. The phone in her hand trembled. It wasn't the one she'd used when she pretended to be a normal person. Ugh, she destroyed that a while ago so that the police couldn't track her. It was the one he'd given her for communicating with him. It probably belonged to someone they'd killed, or perhaps he'd used mind control to steal it from someone who never even knew it was gone. She stared at the screen for a moment but finally decided to answer it. Ugh. What the hell is this? He must have found something funny because the man on the other end laughed. You know what? Good point. Because it did mention look at me or don't look at me was taken out by multiple people. I guess Serica can read minds, but she's not the controller. So it's this guy? Her voice is so different. Serica's voice was filled with rage. He knew, and yet he asked anyway. He was either a sadist or some kind of sick hedonist. The methods he came up with for his murders always felt like one big joke. Of course you were, asshole, she thought. A warrant had been put out for Miyashiro only a few hours after Nonokurasu's death, and in a way that would normally never be possible. There was no way they'd give a miner's real name out in that span of time unless he had used his power. Ugh. What? I, I, I mean, I know I keep asking this, I'm sorry, but what the hell is the motivation? She hated the fact that she was on the phone. Without being able to see him, she couldn't read his mind. She wanted to know what he was really thinking. その方が力士シールに注目も集まるからな。しかも犯人として逮捕されて終わりだと。宮城拓は最初の犯行である9月7日時点ですでに18歳だ。犠牲者は7人。未成年としては犯罪史上最多。今の世論の流れなら10中8
それ以外のことに私の価値などない。Takuro Miyashiro's survival. That was the one thing she'd cared about since she came into this world. Being a murderer, being an accomplice to murder, using her mind reading powers to find psychics, she'd done it all for that reason. But now? <laughs> Serica managed to stop herself from speaking. He was right. She thought it was the only way. There's the committee. There it is. That's why I'd come to her for help, right? She thought that this was her only chance to save Miyashiro. Mr. Mind Control is at the bottom of the chart? Maybe it's not like some sort of psychic power making you the top one, but even so, who the hell is the top one? And then he spoke in a voice that sounded a little too deliberate. She could sense his lips curling into a smile. <laughs> she finally gave a small gasp. She thought that that's where he was hiding too. How did he know about Frisia? When she whispered that to herself, he said, <laughs> And that's not good, because Frieza's looking into him, or at least trying to. Kunosato's actively hunting him down. Not that she knows who he is, but she's after the committee. Serika hung up the phone and started to run, ignoring the pounding in her head. So that's it, Kunosato said in a voice that was almost too soft to hear. And then she put her hand up to her head and started to think. I told Kunosato the same thing I just told Shinjo. This is going to be painfully awkward. Kusarika is probably going to just walk in and be like, like, I know what you're thinking, but I'm here to save you? Shinjo had brought me back to Frisia and given me a stern warning not to leave again. Then he'd quickly gone back to his investigation, in theory looking for me. Ooh, awkward. Although, it's a good thing she's here, because if Serika barges in and says, Trust me, Arimura will be like, What the hell? She's telling the truth. <laughs> Both Arimura and Momo said were worried about me. I was glad for that. The only ones who knew the truth were the three of them, Shinjo, Kazuki, and Uki. We may have had different goals, but if nothing else, they knew I wasn't the killer, and they were working to find the real killer, Serika. Only now did I realize how stupid it was for me to run away. Compared to this morning, the thick fog in my brain had lifted a little. Don't think about revenge. Don't do anything dangerous. Live the same life as everyone else does, but don't get buried among the crowd. The words in the letter were like heavy weights keeping me grounded. Miyashiro. Arimura. Hmm. Hi? Kunosato turned away from the computer screen and toward us. Her expression was even sterner than usual. Makes sense. 
不審な男たちが目撃されるようになったそうだ。Is this that K company? Like, k o s h i n Do I have that right? Bingo! I bet you it's this one. しかも、それと並行して、多数のリアルブートらしき現象の目撃情報がある。さらに、その企業は、例の AH 東京総合病院と深い関係があることも分かった。つまりどういうことですかここからは推測だがプラネタリウムはあの地下施設と同じくギガロマニアックスの実験か何かに使われていたのではないかと思うところがあの地震でプラネタリウムは破壊されいやあるいは逆にプラネタリウムでの実験にトラブルがあって地震を引き起こしたのかもしれないがとにかく実験中だったギガロマニアックスの発生因子とでも言うべきものが周囲に拡散されてしまった私はそれが白い光だと考えている I'm guessing the experiment went wrong as was mentioned earlier in the game it was a weird earthquake because there were no aftershocks so it might not have actually been an earthquake it might have been an explosion that quaked the earth if that makes sense アリムラちゃんたちの脳からギガロマニアックスの能力を引き出してしまった原因物質ってことかしらね物質じゃなくて電磁波みたいなものだとかエネルギーとかそういうものかもしれないけどああつまりアレルゲンみたいなものですね<笑>アレルゲン with a hard G Normally used to refer to an antigen that stimulates an allergy response in humans. The antigen causes a reaction within the body's immune cells and is then ejected from the body by antibodies within the bloodstream and bodily fluids. However, when this immune response is too strong, allergy symptoms appear that can resemble an illness. Things such as pollen and foods that contain these antigens are sometimes referred to as allergens as well. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It makes you look ignorant. That's already insulting enough. But it makes you look like an idiot who needs to shut up. <laughs> That hurts even more if she's not lying. <laughs> Armura frowned. The two of them still weren't getting along. こここれれまででの研究によれば、脳がまだ発達段階で活発に活動している若い人間。その中でも、脳への負荷が非常に高い事象を経験したものだけに、能力の発言が見られる。はい。It's so weird to see our own profile every time it happens.I nodded. I knew exactly what she was talking about. 能力者の能力は、その出来事。というよりその出来事に対してどんな心理的作用が働いたかに依存しているその話みんなでしたことありますどんなことを望んだかで能力が決まるってことですよねありてに言えばそういうことになるな When I'd woken up from the earthquake I'd felt a lot of stress at the way my body wouldn't move I never wanted to go through that again Not only was there the stress of not being able to move, there was the terror that came with wondering if I might stay like that forever. That's why I'd gained my power of psychokinesis. When I was telling that to Kunosato, my mind flashed back to how Nono helped me with my physical therapy. She'd done her best to cheer me up, at times kind and gentle, and at times strict. She was always there for me. But now she was. <laughs> I forced myself to snap out of it, and then I realized that Kunosada was staring at me. Miyashiro Takuru no Norikua, Psycho Kinesis. Sono has say yoin wa, Kakokuna Rihabiri. 
私もお前のことを調べてそう思い込んでいた For some reason, she looked frustrated. 思い込んでいたって安易な判断と思い込み私もまだまだ未熟だ本当ならもっと早く尾上セリカにたどり着けていたかもしれないのにはどどういうことですか今も言ったろ能力者はいずれも地震の時にギガロマニアックスの発生因子を浴びて能力を発現させているおそらくあの過酷な地震が彼らに強いストレスと願望を与えそれが引き金となったお前もそうだな有村ええ That's what she said before that her powers had awoken during the earthquake and that the cause was that she wanted to know the truth 山添ウキもそうだ佐久間先生からのレポートによれば能力の発言はやはり渋谷地震の直後だというそれとパイロキネシストのハイダリコあの女のこともようやく調べ終えたがクノサラポイントとアコーナーオブスクリーン It was displaying the data about the pyrokinetic that had threatened us ハイダリコは渋谷地震で顔にやけどを負い他の能力者と同様その直後に覚醒している絶望感による過度のストレスと他の人間に自分と同じ絶望を与えてやりたいという暗い願望が発生因子と結びついたらしい you can see it on the article she felt linked with the causal factor <laughs> これで分かったろもちろんすべての能力者を調べたわけではないが私が知る限り全員例の白い光を浴びた直後に能力を得ている1年以上のタイムラグがあったものなど私の持っているデータの中にはいないんだよ I started to understand what Kunosara was trying to say so the fact that our physical therapy was rough was just a coincidence And then I felt an awful sensation. Johor says as the Tokoroni or to No Luxon of Chicago had against the Sanya. Canada's Okina Fuxayoga Okora Taiga Tai Hodoni Hidoi Zutsuda. Sure, Koreva Kekan Kakchoni or Mono Datomo. The two no gay no Nakadewa, Kiwamete popular. Hands the two to Sindan Saritamimo. 血管が拡張するために起こるギガロマニアックスの場合の血管拡張は発生因子が引き金となってドーパミンとそれに類した神経伝達物質が過剰に分泌されるのが原因というデータが出ているが Then she paused. She was probably giving me time to think. そこで宮代に質問だお前はリハビリの時にひどい頭痛を経験したことはあるのか well, didn't we feel it during the earthquake? I tried to think, but I couldn't remember any pain in my head just from the rest of my body, particularly my joints. いえ、おそらくないと思いますなら、他の能力者と同じように。地震の際にひどい頭痛を経験した瞬間があったはずだ。Yeah, but what was the moment? I know we read it in the flashback. I know it said we had a headache. Maybe it was when the parents were in the hospital, when we were in the hospital? Because we were talking to Shinjo, right? We made it to the hospital, we found our parents, and then we had a headache. Was it when we said, I wish you were gone forever? Was that what it was? <gasps> Because that was when everything went white, right? I could hear my heart beat loudly. My vision started to blur, and then my heart beat so loud that I could hear it. So, no, Toki. Oh, my, what are you doing? 